the founding and finding of Pompeii. The town of Pompeii was a reasonably wealthy one in the 1st century AD. It was first founded in the 8th century BC by some Greeks, who were killed by the Etruscans a hundred years later. Another century or so passed before the Etruscans were wiped out by the armies of Syracuse, who were then killed by the Samnites after a brief period of the Greeks being in charge again. In 300 BC, the Romans had a crack at conquering the whole Naples area, but had to make do with becoming allies instead, which is the military equivalent of getting a trophy just for taking part. Being allies, at least on paper, didn't stop the people of Pompeii from siding with their neighbours against Rome in 89 BC, at which point the top dog Roman general Lucius Cornelius Sunna laid siege to the town and captured it. Out went Greek, Iscan, Etruscan and all the other languages Pompeians had picked up over the years and in came public order, soldiers in skirts, Latin and the general's nephew as governor. After the Romans took over, things settled down in Pompeii for a while, although a riot in the amphitheatre in 59 AD and a massive earthquake three years later shook things up a bit. In fact, Pompeii never really recovered from the earthquake of 63 AD and was still in the process of rebuilding in 79 AD when the nearby Mount Vesuvius erupted, burying the town under hot volcanic ash and killing thousands of people. According to eyewitness accounts, it took a matter of hours for Pompeii and other nearby towns to be blanketed by pumas and ash, and within less than a day, the whole place was swallowed by pyroclastic ash, which is like normal ash, but still hot and carried along by extremely toxic gas. Helpfully, the great Roman historian and general, Pliny the Elder, was on hand to record his observations as he tried to rescue survivors and got himself killed and his son, Pliny the Younger, wrote a gripping account of the tragedy for his friend, Tacitus. For a long time, Tacitus's account of the death of Pompeii was all historians had to remember it by, until an Italian architect, Domenico Fontana, discovered the ruins in the 1590s. Because archaeology hadn't been invented yet, nobody started digging through the buried city until 1748, with German engineer Karl Weber in charge of randomly digging up and selling bits of the site. The work was taken over in 1860 by Giuseppe Fiorelli, who had the bright idea of approaching the site methodically, rather than going in with pickaxes swinging. Fiorelli discovered strange gaps in the layered pumas and ash, and realised these were places where bodies had fallen, not rotting away until after the volcanic intestines had hardened around them. He decided to inject some of these gaps with plaster, and when the surrounding rock was chipped away, Fiorelli discovered a perfect cast of a dead Roman citizen, preserved for nearly 2,000 years. The result of all this is that Pompeii, once a forgotten little town near Naples, has now emerged as the most important ancient site in the world, a Roman city frozen in time, with the architecture, paintings, mosaics, streets, and even the copious rude graffiti, perfectly preserved. It's a place where history still lives, where archaeology was invented, and where experts and historians are still, to this day, learning new things about the past as they continue to pick through the fabulous ghosts of Pompeii. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And from all of us at History HQ, we'll see you next time.